The only thing that matters is right now, this moment, this one spectacular moment we are sharing together. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best sitcom stars to voice act. And look at me now! It is time to rise up! Number 10. Andy Samberg as Jonathan, the Hotel Transylvania franchise. In the world of Hotel Transylvania, Count Dracula ran a monster sanctuary that promised to be free of worries and of humans, until one slipped through the cracks. How many of you are there? Just me. I like to hit it alone. You meet so many awesome people in the youth hostels. Hey, speaking of awesome, that cape thing is killing it! Jonathan, a young human backpacker, challenged the monster's ideas about humanity and themselves. The character's voice had to have energy, empathy, and the ability to sing. Fortunately, Brooklyn Nine-Nine actor Andy Samberg had all that and more. Tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why ain't nothing but a mistake. Now number five. The role required a voice actor capable of both comedy and romance. Samberg nailed that balance while transforming Jonathan from a curious outsider to a loving husband and father over the course of the franchise. With just as much charm and charisma as Jake Peralta, Jonathan was easily a highlight of the studio's fun and frightening franchise. I wonder if Van Helsing can adjust this thing so that I'm a monster, but still me. I don't think so. Aw, oh, come on! How about just a tail? No, Johnny. You're perfect just the way you are. Number 9. Julia Louis-Dreyfus as Princess Ada, A Bug's Life Whether you know her from Seinfeld or Veep, it's hard not to love Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Since she excelled at playing self-centered characters, it was a little difficult to imagine her playing a selfless Disney royal, even if said royal is a bug. And yet, we still heard her performance as Princess Ada just six months after the end of Seinfeld. Nobody really believes I can do this job. It's like, uh, they're all watching me. Just, just... Waiting for you to screw up. Fans noticed it was a huge departure from Louis Dreyfus's small screen role. Ada was perpetually self-conscious, kind, and carried a need to be liked by those around her. Okay, Ada. Now what do we do? Uh... Oh, don't tell me. I know it. I know it. What is it? We relax. <laughs> right. Louis Dreyfus pulled off the character brilliantly, so much so that we wouldn't blame you if you didn't know she played the role. Pixar must have been similarly impressed by her performance because they brought her back for 2020's Onward. I am a mighty warrior. Number 8. Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Young Simba, The Lion King when thinking of The Lion King, many think of Ferris Bueller's Day Off star Matthew Broderick as the voice of Simba. And while it's true that Broderick provided the voice for adult Simba, the leading lion's younger self was actually voiced by Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Dad just showed me the whole kingdom, and I'm gonna rule it all. You may recognize him as Tim Taylor's middle child Randy from Home Improvement. Much like Randy, Cub Simba can be a bit of a troublemaker. I walk on the wild side. I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> JTT perfectly captured the young lion's occasional sass and cockiness. To make matters better, the young actor also hit the emotional beats that still make us tear up. Thomas gave a full circle of life powerhouse performance that has gone down as one of Disney's best. I'm a genius. Hey, genius, it was my idea. Yeah but I pulled it off. Number 7. John Goodman as James P. Sullivan, aka Sully, the Monsters, Inc. franchise. While Sully may have been the top scarer at Monsters, Incorporated, he also had a heart of gold. His voice had to be gruff but lovable. It also needed to inspire joy and laughter just as easily as he caused screams of fear. So we think Pixar made the right choice in casting John Goodman. No monster in here. Well, now there is, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to scare you. I'm off duty. In spite of the actor's imposing frame, he became one of TV's most lovable father figures through Roseanne. This persona naturally translated into his vocal performance of Sully. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you know. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Now I'm Uh, boo. Um. that. Well, that's very nice. Come here, you. <laughs> Despite looking scary, he excelled at being the guardian of a young human child. 
Goodman was so scarily good for the role that he's been brought back to reprise his fantastic role in multiple mediums. You have to move on. Your team doesn't qualify. Yes, it does. The star player has just arrived. Number six, Amy Poehler as Joy, Inside Out. Leslie Nope was one of the most upbeat sitcom characters ever made. Even on her toughest days, she remained optimistic. As such, it should come as no surprise that her actress, Amy Poehler, was cast as the bubbly personification of Joy in Inside Out. You have to play that! Well, I have to practice, and I don't think of it as playing so much as hugging. While Poehler was already an experienced voice actress, her Pixar role shined as her strongest performance. She brought tons of energy without getting obnoxious by making subtle changes in tone and her delivery. And when Joy needed to grow, Polar masterfully conveyed heavier emotions. Sadness. Mom and Dad, the team, they came to help because of sadness. We also have to shout out her fellow sitcom alumni for their work, too. The Office actress Mindy Kaling nailed the role of disgust. Meanwhile, her sitcom co-star Phyllis Smith made sadness extremely relatable. Why are you crying? It's, it's just like really the opposite of what we're going for here. Crying helps me slow down and obsess over the weight of life's problems. Number five, Kaylee Cuoco as Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. On The Big Bang Theory, Kaylee Cuoco's character Penny was by far the least knowledgeable about sci-fi and superheroes. That's what made it ironic to hear Cuoco herself as the voice of fan-favorite character Harley Quinn in a streaming series. This is New Gotham. The power isn't held by the few. It is up for grabs. So everyone should go get some! <coughs> the show centers on Harley's life after she breaks up with the Joker and begins to explore her own independent feelings and interests. Instead of imitating past performances, Cuoco provides a unique and energetic take that keeps us in stitches. You tell Commissioner Gordum nice. that I am the baddest bitch in town! I'm Harley Quinn! I'm impetuous! I kiss people at random! Mwah! What's happening? Since the actress also excels at conveying Harley's vulnerabilities, we're often sympathetic for the character's struggles. Cuoco got us rooting for the anti-heroine to succeed in love, life, and all her edgy pursuits. I am having a blast! Always wanted I've anarchy and sushi. Number four, Stephanie Beatrice as Mirabel Madrigal, Encanto. Some sitcom actors become known for playing a certain type of character and get stuck in a typecasting rut. Thankfully, Stephanie Beatrice dodged this bullet when she was cast as Mirabel Madrigal in Encanto. Because I have an amazing family and an amazing house and an amazing you. And seeing you get your special gift in your door, that's gonna make me way more happy than anything. The selfless animated sibling is the complete opposite of Beatrice's brash and no-nonsense Brooklyn Nine-Nine character Rosa. Through Mirabel, Beatrice was able to show off her softer side and her amazing singing voice. Encanto opens with her song The Family Madrigal, after all. People are fantastical and magical, that's who we are in the family. That song alone convinces us that the character is a responsible young woman who cares deeply for her family. Encanto enchanted us right away thanks to Stephanie Beatrice's considerable talents. What do you see? I see... me. All of me. Number 3. Ed Asner as Carl Fredrickson, Up. Before Ed Asner became everyone's favorite grumpy grandpa in Up, he was best known for playing Lou Grant in The Mary Tyler Moore Show. The role won him five Emmy Awards, two of which were for a spin-off where he was the star. You said you wanted someone with a point of view. With a strong point of view. You didn't say you wanted it to be yours. With this impressive acting resume, casting him as the lead in a film had to have been a no-brainer. Asner made the Krabby Carl hilarious for most of the run. Please let me in. No. Oh, all right. You can come. Although he is a gruff man, the actor makes sure to leave touches of the character's internal grief and notes of joy. Asner wonderfully saw the character through a journey of moving on from his lost love. Sorry about your house, Mr. Fredrickson. You know, it's just a house. Number two, Will Arnett as Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman. 
Will Arnett's most well-known roles both have something in common, a serious case of arrested development. Both Job and Bojack are irresponsible performers who often make things worse for themselves rather than owning up to their own mistakes. While the flaws lead to comedy in the sitcom, these personality traits lead to tragedy in animation. I never asked for that kind of pressure, but you and me, we don't want anything from each other. We can hear the pain in Arnett's voice as the show tackled heavy topics such as substance use disorder, death, and self-loathing. He can make us resent or feel bad for Bojack from moment to moment. Hey, Mom. Knock once if you love me and care about me and want me to know that I made your life a little bit brighter. Even in the darkest places, Arnett never loses the character's light. It's a tough balancing act that the actor absolutely nails. And I just know I'm gonna bojack things up. Bojack things up? You mean show up somewhere and be the life of the party? And then share a laugh with your good friend Mr. Peanut Butter? No, obviously I meant screw everything up until she hates me. I don't think I can take that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Abby Jacobson as Katie Mitchell, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. The Broad City actress makes us believe in pursuing our passions. After all these years, I'm finally gonna meet my people. Jerry Seinfeld as Barry B. Benson, Bee Movie. His sarcastic voice was perfect for the bee. How did you learn to do that? What? That, 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 the talking thing. Oh, same way you did, I guess. Mama, Dada, honey, you pick it up. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. Bees are funny. If we didn't laugh, we'd cry with what we have to deal with. Rain Wilson as Lex Luthor, Various. We can only assume Lex Luthor became evil after one too many Jell-O stapler pranks. I don't know where you've come from, you alien scum. But you picked the wrong city. And the wrong human. John Ritter as Clifford, Clifford the Big Red Dog. We're thankful that Clifford isn't quite as much of a klutz as Jack Tripper. Hey, there's a dog. Maybe he'll be my friend. I hope he likes to play tag. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Steve Carell as Gru, The Despicable Me Franchise Is it better to be feared or loved? Michael Scott and Gru may have different answers to this age-old question, but both would be delivered by the same man. And in a way, that makes perfect sense. Oh, you've got to be pulling on my leg! In both the case of The Office and Despicable Me, the audience shouldn't have any reason to like Carell's character. Michael Scott is incompetent and selfish, often crossing lines with his employees that should never be crossed. Gru is a supervillain, prone to typical bad guy behavior. Yet both men are made lovable by Carell's flawless comedic delivery. Hmm, I think I can live with that. We're not sure either character would work without him. After just one Despicable Me movie, you'll start rooting for a supervillain. I will catch you, and I will never let you go again. Did we miss any of your favorite performances? Let us know in the comments. Yes, Joy? You'll be in charge of the console, keeping Riley happy all day long. And may I add, I love your dress, it's adorable. Oh, this old thing? Thank you so much. I love the way it twirls. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.